Hi everyone and welcome to episode 27 of my knitting podcast. My name is Marlene and because I have been forgetting to kind of like properly introduce myself these last couple of videos, I thought I'd kind of redo that or like change that. So in case you're new here or you don't know anything about me yet, um, like I said, I am Marlene. I'm a former PhD student in media studies who quit academia to work at her local yarn shop. I love um, baking and reading as well as spinning and knitting. And I talk about all of these things, but mostly about my making journey uh, here on this channel. Um, I mostly share about what I've been making recently and what I am thinking about making in the near future. Um, both knitting, which is the yeah the biggest part about my making at the moment, and then also spinning and some sewing. Um, yeah, today is a regular episode uh, of my podcast. Um, I am also planning on including some Q1 planning in this video, since all of the things I've got on my needles right now are part of fulfilling these Q1 plans. So. I'm really excited to share about that. I also want to reflect on my um, autumn knitting plans and how kind of like what I've knit of those and what I haven't cast on and what I'm still knitting on this winter. Um, so firstly, I'm going to go through my whips, which there's a lot of them at the moment. It's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine whips, which <laughs> is quite a bit. Uh, even for me, um, there's two blanket whips, which are long-term whips and that uh, one half finished sock project, my first spin and knit project. Um, I think it's four, no, three <laughs> sweaters, a cushion for our cozy at home cow that we're hosting on Instagram, a friend of mine and um, I are doing that, Lydia and I, uh, a test knit. Uh, accessory test knit um, and yeah I think I think that's it. I have one finished object with me today which was uh, one of my like first January finishing goals and I want to share it today on the podcast. I don't have my two latest beanie um, projects with me since I did feature them in my 2023 knits videos that I just post posted recently. And yeah, so to kick off this video, let me share my first finished object of the year and so far the only one, but this was the most important thing for me to get done at the beginning of this year, since it was the one thing that I wanted to finish up until the end of December and I didn't manage, which is fine. Um, but yeah, so I exclusively knit on this for the first week of January and it's finally finished and I adore it. It's the Barbara Shaw by Gregoria Fibers and it's made in the Pernilla yarn by uh, Phil Colana, which is a 100% Peruvian Highland wool in the color Chai. It has about the wing span of my arms, like my own wingspan is a bit shorter than this is. I think it it, um, at the end, after blocking, it was around 170 centimeters. I'll I'll put in the exact, the correct number here, and let me try and put it on. This has been how I've been wearing it mostly. I've been loving wearing this at work uh, to have like a warm layer on, since the shop can get quite cold with like people coming in, and uh, it being extremely cold at the moment in Germany, which I'm just looking out the window and it's like, it has snowed. It's not snowing at the moment, but it's just bliss, pure bliss. I love the winter, like snowy days. Yeah, sorry to talk about the weather. I've gotten a comment once being like, you're only talking about the weather if you don't know what to talk about anymore. And I would disagree <laughs> if it's snow or like extremely nice weather. It's okay to talk about, I think. So yeah, I hope this looks as nice on camera as I feel in it. It's truly a, a wish list knit for me and I'm so happy that I finally, finally finished it. I actually, 
shortened the whole thing by a couple of rows. Um, I have everything linked in my or like written down in my Ravelry page. I wanted to say, and I think that is something that I picked up from Mia from Knit and Grace. If Ravelry isn't accessible to you, you can always uh, write me a comment if there's any like concrete questions that you have about a project and I haven't linked or maybe, maybe shared that information, write me a comment and I'll answer that, of course. Uh, for everyone else who maybe could use Ravelry or is using Ravelry, I think this is for me still uh, the best option to kind of like keep track of my project making notes and my stash and everything. So yeah. Um, I have shortened this by a couple of rows, uh, which means I have started doing the decreases a bit sooner than the pattern stated to do for the bigger size, which I did size two. And that came out, that was like a miracle. <laughs> I was uh, at the end and I had maybe this much like of the last, like of the fourth skein left. I had five skeins, so I have one left over, but that was great. Like I didn't have to break into it. That could be... Um, that's going into my kind of like scrappy like one skein stash um, zipper bag and so I could use it maybe for a baby knit or I could gift it like do take it to our um, knitting circle like a yarn, yarn swap that we do regularly so yeah for some reason cutting out those couple of rows in the middle helped me actually manage to only use four skeins so if you also want to make make this blanket i think it'll, it'll be super easy to um, replicate those steps and uh, get this shawl with just 500 grams of yarn and not 550 which i don't think i would have used another 50 grams i would have probably gotten around maybe like 220 or something so i'm quite chuffed with that i'm gonna take it off now i hope i can uh, insert some pictures of how i've been wearing it like I said, I, I love it. It's it's my favorite thing right now. And um, it's nice because this is my first like real shawl. I mean, I've done the petite knit um, Sophie shawl a couple of times. Um, but yeah, this is like a proper shawl. Like this is more than just scatter stitch. Not to like say the Sophie shawl isn't also a nice like staple and basic thing, but yeah, I'm just really happy with this and yeah it's my first and so far only finished object of the year um but yeah let's get into my whips um i'm just gonna start in kind of like chronological order from what i i think like have started first and then go on to the newer whips i guess so one of my oldest whips is the scrappy cozy comfort blanket this pattern is by a uh, homespun house and I have recently done a thing with this let me show you so this is what it looks like it's becoming quite big and I have actually recently after work I just came home and I was like I'm in a sewing in yarny ends mood and I did it. I sewed in all my ends and I think it looks quite neat. Let me... I hope you're actually able to see. I always carry that one um, end of the yarn with me. Like when you're doing, it's the same technique as if you're doing like two stranded color work in a way. So that I'm kind of like holding the end as like a float in a way. But then I had another end I didn't already weave in. So I wove in all my ends on this, which makes this just like so much more polished. And I have been loving to work on this. Um, it has just scraps from um, all of my other projects in these last two years. It's mostly hand dyed, but I've been also going into using some other fingering weight held double or DK held single to put into it. And I think I want to finish this this year. I think lengthwise I've gotten about a third or like 40, like 30 to 40 percent of where I want to be in the end. It's already so wide that if I'm working on it, it's like a lap blanket. It's not going down my, my legs, but it's it's quite a, a nice um, length and size already, which I love. 
this is the progress I've been making recently. I've put in a little marker, but then obviously like weaving in all the ends was the most project uh, progress on this one recently. So yeah, it's more of like an active whip at the moment uh, since I have introduced a couple of things like Scrappy Saturday or Scrappy Sunday to my making practice, which I'm going to talk about a bit later. But this is making me work on my um, scrappy blankets more. Next up is my Traveler Crew Neck by Andrea Maori. Um, I have made some progress on this. It has been sitting in the project bag for some time since I have been, like I said, focusing on my barber shawl and then I had crazy cast on energy at the beginning of January after finishing the shawl. And this was at a point where I had to do something new that I have, had never done before and I was a bit like, I don't know how I would put it, but I, was, I wasn't scared, but I, I wasn't in the headspace to try like do something new on an old on an old project I'm not sure if I'm I'm kind of like putting it correctly but I had finished the length of the body that was in the pattern and I was like this is looking so short obviously the pattern states that this is going to grow in length so I didn't want to make it too long um, but yeah I put in about a couple of centimeters also going to be linked on my Ravelry page. I'm not sure how much I put in. I think like maybe two more repeats of this like gata stitch like patterning before starting splitting. And this was a new technique that I learned. I usually only know how to do like the backward loop method to cast on new stitches. Um, but with this and the sweet shop blanket actually you're supposed to do um, What's that thing called? It's like a cable cast on. And I had done it on the sweet shop blanket, but there's just one stitch. With this, you have to cast on more stitches with a cable cast on um, method, like on the other end, if it's not like you're knitting and then casting on stitches, but like at the beginning of a round, you have to, you have to start casting on stitches and then knitting further. I hope I'm making sense. Um, and I hadn't done that before with more than one uh, stitch cast it on so I'm basically doing uh, I think it's the front side knitting up and then I'm going to I think knit the back and like uh, connect the two and then I'm gonna do the sleeves and the the crew neck and then I'm gonna be finished uh, this is actually something that I would like to get done maybe like till mid-February or maybe even till the end of this month I'm not sure um, I have been enjoying the um, the wool a lot. This is Good Wool by Pearl Soho. And yeah, I just really like knitting with this two ply. I have found in general that I really love two plies. And yeah, this is the progress that I have made since I last talked to you all. So that's quite nice, I think. Um, it's a bit more of a slow project since I have been making so many other things. So I think if I had uh, just worked on it, um, monogamously I would be a lot 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 further already or probably done but yeah it, I'm just not stressing myself out let me check when I actually started this <clears throat> so my Ravelry said that I had started this at the end of October so it's quite a long project already but that doesn't really matter does it so next project is my sweet shop blanket and I have recently put in two more squares which was my goal for this month was to put in one square each week so i have put in these two i'm not sure what the colors are so i'm not going to attempt to tell you i think they must be either sorella or olivia and oliver fibers and I think this must have been from my advent, um, swappy advent with my friend. Uh, and I really love that color. So yeah, I'm trying to change up um, tonos and um, variegated colorways. Not evenly, like it's not supposed to be perfect or anything, but just in a way in which 
just looks nice and like spread out. So I'm going to attempt and put in another square today or tomorrow. Today is Saturday. And like I said, my scrappy making practice has had some, has me work on my blankets every weekend, which I love. I hope I'm mentioning everything. Uh, for this blanket, the main color was a double or is a double Sunday in the color marzipan uh, by Santner's Garn. And then the squares, like I said, are fingering held double most of the time and it's just an array of things. I, I think I've put in for the first couple of squares in my Ravelry, Ravelry project page which colorways uh, I chose, but I'm not sure I will be able to continue since as you can see, I have quite a bit of an assortment of like scraps, um, like hand dyed scraps. And so I just put in whatever feels right for me. Yeah. Um, actually talking about scraps, I wanted to show you something that I have uh, started last year. And that is keeping all my ends. <laughs> I'm keeping them in like a little Ikea, um, like glass jar that we usually use for like nuts and seeds and like stuff in the kitchen um, but this actually was my progress on weaving in all the ends on my blanket so this is 2024 so far and then i have put all my 2023 scraps uh, like literally just the ends like that's not my scrap stash my scrap stash is a bit bigger um but these are just the ends and I thought about just keeping them like this um, and then I'm not sure what I'll be making with them but I have seen on Knit California so uh, on Leslie's channel that she took her like scraps um, to Hedgehog Fiber when she went and I know that other um, yarn like companies do a similar thing where if you bring your scraps you can get a discount and they actually use those scraps to make the tweed for their tweedy base which i thought was just nice to hold on to it's not too big i can just put it in like one uh, side of my my stash and it'll be fine <clears throat> and so yeah that's why i'll be keeping them um, I'm not sure if I'll ever get to Hedgehog Fiber in Ireland, but um, yeah, I just thought, or maybe I'm going to cart them one day, like make fiber out of it. That would be really like interesting thing to do, but we'll see. The next thing I cast on was, I'm not sure which bag it is. Which one is it? This one. This was kind of a spur of the moment thing. I've actually went to work one day, completely forgot that it was Saturday. So we had knit night that night and I had just finished my barber show that morning. And I was like, yay, I like so enthusiastic about it. I was wearing my barber show and I came to work and I realized it was Saturday and that we had knit night and I didn't have a project cast on. And so I had to buy yarn, a sweater quantity and, uh, uh, take some needles of my uh, boss and I gave them back to her obviously but I had to cast on a new project unfortunately so this is the beginning of my storm sweater by Petite Knit. This was something on my making wish list and it's actually in my make nine as well so this wasn't a impulsive cast on although it was kind of like an impulsive yarn buying thing. Obviously I get the discount for like working at the shop so that's always nice uh, and I was planning on getting the pure gint for this yarn like for this project um, but yeah I didn't plan on doing it that day so it was kind of impulsive but also kind of planned out so I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, I got this because I had just de-stashed another uh, drops um, sweater quantity in a gray yarn at the end, um, I just didn't want to knit with that anymore. I've had it in stash for like a, one and a half years. I've never grabbed to knit with it. And so I thought if I sell that, uh, I can justify getting myself this pure gint. And in the end, I didn't. I, I only paid like a couple of um, euros more for this um, in comparison to what I had for the drops and also um, got from the person who bought it in my D stash. I just did that on eBay and just sold it like 
within a, the town like someone came around and, and took it off my hands so that was nice um sorry i'm already starting to rumble again so <laughs> what can i say about this i'm not sure about the um colorway name again so i'm gonna link that it's just one of the gray colors i was like going back and forth about this <laughs> the whole knit night basically helped me decide on, on the gray um, I wasn't sure which one to to pick and so I'm, I'm still not sure if this is maybe too um, warm or cold for me obviously it's a more cold gray I think but like I'm not sure this is such a it's difficult to say please don't tell me if you don't think it looks good on me because I'm gonna knit that like regardless <laughs> um, just please don't be mean about it <laughs> Um, it's okay not everything has to be flattering like I don't subscribe to that concept anyways but um, I'm just excited to make this it has been very interesting to knit on so far they have been learning curves like I said recently I've been making some pretty like stupid mistakes um, in relation to how long and like how um, kind of like well I've already been knitting I then sometimes just make some mistakes where I'm like oh duh Marlene you could have known that but obviously I'm just human so um I've been reading the chart as if it was like a chart in the round since that was what I had been doing for my lacy socks recently uh, so I was like the chart is not correct in a way um it was correct obviously because I had to knit it in the round not in the round but in the row so Mind you, I was running into some problems with that, but yeah, since then it has been a nice thing to, to work on. But since I finished the back panel, this has just been living in its project bags, in its project bag and other things have taken um, the lead kind of, I wanna finish some of my nine whips before going on and working on this some more. Um, yeah, my... Mm, my next work in progress is my first color work sweater and i'm so happy with it this is so much progress uh and i have not shown you this before like because of my other videos i have not podcasted is that a word i have not done a podcast in some time and i nearly have a whole body of a color work sweater done obviously it only has color work in the yoke but yeah let me show you this is the mudo sweater by the petite knitter it's made in um, the woolen twine bfl and massam base this is the undyed base so it's not a woolen twine base like she i think she also gets it from another supplier she has not spun it herself but she has hand dyed and natural dyed this uh, accent color which I think was called chestnut and I really love it. Um, would I like the contrast to be a bit higher than this and like more like the original pictures that the petite knitter has done and also my friend Anastasia has done. We're doing a little mini cal, unofficial mini, mini cal on this and she has um, used a more of like a beigey, um, whitish um, oatmeal colorway for the base and then her contrast is a bit higher but i've actually put like the bla blue blue <laughs> the black and white filter on this and it tells me that the contrast is high enough and i hope this also shows off on camera i'm actually um incidentally wearing i'm not sure if that's the correct word to <laughs> to describe what i wanted to say but i am wearing my lento which is one of my more fitted sweaters it is also one uh, of mine that has a bracelet length sleeve that I sometimes like and then sometimes I find myself like pulling it a lot so I'm not sure about it it's really nice if I'm working like I don't have anything in like in my business if I'm uh, cooking or like doing the dishes or doing anything else it's not like annoying that's a nice thing about this and it is really nicely cropped let me just maybe get up and show you I hope you can see um so I'm wearing my um my pajama bottoms <laughs> still and this is like my my belly button is like here so I mostly wear 
high-waisted jeans and so this really comes up at a nice point and so I want to kind of model this sweater to the length and like measurements of my lento except for the sleeves I want to make the sleeves a bit longer on this I've actually uh, laid this flat on my bed last night and put this over it and so I have measured how many more centimeters I have to do before starting the ribbing this is just because in this pattern there is a short like a crop version which is even shorter than this and that would be too crop for me um, and then there's a long version and that would be too long for me and so I just figured I, I used the pattern to do the color work yoke and um, everything else like the increases the short rows um, I, I used the pattern for but now I'm just probably mostly gonna wing it like <laughs> with finishing it off um, in the body and yeah one thing of course that you can probably see is that it's puckering a bit in the lines between the color work I am pretty confident that that is gonna fix itself with blocking. Um, I'm gonna turn it inside out and show you. And I think my color work floats look pretty, pretty decent. So for this being my first color work, uh, I hope you were able to see. I think they look quite nice. I am gonna turn it inside out when I'm washing and blocking it. I've read that on a block um, somewhere and then I'm gonna try and stretch the um, the floats a bit and because it is inside out they're going to be pulled a bit more whereas if they were like the right side they um, they weren't <laughs> I'm not sure that that was not a great sentence but yeah I think I'm I am quite happy with how I, I did all of those techniques I've actually did one chart before ribbing back um, with the same needle size that I started the sweater with and it was way too small. Um, I had a gauge of uh, 27 stitches in the color work and I was supposed to have a stitch gauge of 22. <laughs> so uh, I started with um, needle size 3.5 millimeter and I went up to a 5 millimeter needle on my color work. I'm doing two-handed color work, so I'm using my um, base color uh, on my left hand. So I'm um, doing like continental knitting uh, with my base color and I'm doing um, English knitting with my um, with the color that I want to be dominant in this uh, color work with my contrast color. So I hope I'm saying all of these things correctly because this is my first color work journey and I have been posting about it on my Instagram stories and I have gotten some quite nice feedback about people being like yeah we want to see like the in-between steps like this is this is great now I can maybe like just learn from your mistakes so I hope that was helpful I have linked it in like a highlight on my um, account as well I'm Marlene Nitz on Instagram as well I never say that because I'm like if you want to find me there you'll find me there <laughs> if you don't want to find me there that's also that's also fine um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure this will kind of like lay flatter in the end. I'm not too worry, worried about it. I've actually went down to a size 4.5 me needle in between the color work sections because I thought like five would maybe give it a bit too much of like a big, big looking gauge. And then I actually stayed on a 4.5 millimeter needle for the rest of the body, which the last time I checked I was still on gauge and I thought it would be nice to have like a 3.5 for the ribbing and then just the setup rows then go up for the needle size and the color work which obviously tends to be tighter for me that is what I learned now and then have a 4.5 in the body and then go down to the 3.5 again for the ribbing that for now is my plan that is not following the pattern correctly but yeah, we don't have to follow patterns if we don't want to. <laughs> um, and yeah, I want this to be a more, still a bit cropped, still a bit oversized, but a more so fitted version of a sweater. I just want a variety of like fits and styles in my wardrobe. And I've just recently realized, I mean, I knew that I liked this sweater, but I just realized that I really like that it's not as oversized 
which I think is a nice thing to learn and I think that this would sit similarly than this so yeah I'm gonna try and replicate that fit I'm really happy with the project so far really happy that I'm um, yeah, knitting the things that I set out to knit in autumn and that I'm doing color work now. It's pretty awesome and I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, so far the yarn is incredibly soft. I really like working with it. Um, yeah, I don't have any much more to say about that. I, I'm hoping to finish it maybe this January still and then wear it and yeah I for sure be making some more of the petite knitters um, patterns I think her patterns are awesome uh, they look really nice and I think that's it <laughs> so my next project <clears throat> is the Aosta cushion by the knit pearl girl this is my entrance to my own cow the cozy at home cow that I'm doing with Lydia Rababa over on Instagram I'm having like I've put this in my swatch bag and I'm using Plutilopi by Istex uh, that Lydia brought for me from Iceland when she went also uh, a place where I really want to go Iceland which would be really nice to visit one day and then I'm holding this with a suri that just Oops, this story just escaped. This is the Explore Knits and Fiber Surrey Silk in Petrichor, which I made my April cardigan with. And I just think that these two colors just fit perfectly. Look at this. They have like the same like brownish, like reddish, yellowy speckles. It is beautifully variegated and it's coming out like me straighten this it's coming out like this yeah like I said this is a pattern by the knit pearl girl she's actually sponsoring um, the cal as well so we'll be giving away some uh, of her patterns uh, to the winners uh, as well it's been a nice knit uh, it's been uh, my biggest needle knit uh, so far it's a seven millimeter millimeter needle and this is going to fit a 40 by 40 centimeter um, cushion for our couch it's been hairy like it's shedding quite a bit I hope that washing will help this and then just like hoping that'll that it'll I'm just hoping that it won't um, kind of like shed all over the couch all the time I have put in a stitch marker that I have received by a, a, a kind viewer at um, Barcelona Knits. I think this was Karin that gave me this stitch marker. So thanks again. And yeah, this has been a, maybe like working on uh, in the car. Like this is a really easy project. I think I'll take this to work on it while we're driving up to our family this weekend. Um, Think that would be a nice thing to do but I actually casted it on together with my uh, friend Lydia for the cow we have prolonged the cow for another month because we're thinking like everyone's still staying at home and knitting like cozy knitting and everyone could use some more like online like digital knitting together moments so if you're also joining that cow I'd be happy to know what you're knitting on for it um, so maybe you could leave a comment telling me about that and yeah I really enjoy hosting these cows and we'll also have some pretty awesome um, gifts like uh, prizes in the end so if you want to check that out it's linked in my uh, Instagram highlights so my next two projects are both in this like tiny pouch my one of my favorite project bags it's actually my second pedal drop sock um, these are by Florence Miller and this is my second sock of the pair. I have uh, set out to finish my um, one sock project this January. I'm not sure if I'll be able to finish both of them since I have not cast on uh, my second Aviva sock yet, but I have found the yarn again. I said in my uh, in my 2023 knits that I couldn't find the yarn, I found it. So 
it'll be a soon like soon-ish cast on if I finish the pedal drop sock the second sock I'll cast on my second Aviva sock and I'm happy to knit on it um, not much more to say about it I'll be rounding off the projects whenever I finish them and tell you everything I liked didn't like about them and yeah stuff like that my next project is incredibly exciting <laughs> because it's my first hand spun project that I'm actually knitting not a garment but an accessory with so this is my Ashat. Uh, it's called Corydale. Is it Corydale or BFL? It's a Corydale. It's by Frau Wölfchen. She's a German hand dyer who's dyeing on incredibly like cool bases. She has bases that I have never seen ever, anywhere else. And we're also just recently have started carrying her at our uh, shop. And I will link her fibers that we just recently got to our shop in the description box. So if you want to check out these fibers that we're selling now, we're selling BFL and Corydale. Um, just if you want to check that out, uh, check the description. Um, I got this comb top from her. I think it was end of September, beginning of October. That was when I started working at the shop and we went to a little yarn festival together with the whole team at the shop and then I got this and now I have been spinning on it and I have cast on the DRK Everyday Cow by Andrea Maori. So let me show you the yarn first. This is what it looks like in the skein. Actually also show you what it looks like on the bobbin. I have not finished um, I have not finished spinning that project. As you can see, I still have some uh, singles to ply and I still have some yarn to spin and then, <laughs> yeah, so I'm not yet finished, but I think this will take me um, quite a long way still. And I have cast on and this is, yeah, this is so exciting. As you can probably tell, it's still a bit thick and thin, but it's just, so good like <laughs> I'm just so proud of it and it's just so, it's a great pattern it's very engaging and still like not too difficult it'll look something like this when it's done and uh, I'm just really excited I really want to knit on this more um, I just have some focus knits which even if I have a lot of whips I still focus on like two three projects throughout a week uh, and then get some stuff done and then focus on some other stuff more and this is how I also have some finished objects and not just cast on everything in one time and then cast off bind off everything a couple of months later but have some like <laughs> but have kind of like a variety and I still like this like feeling of monogamous knitting uh, but like in in waves kind of I, I can't explain it very well but yeah I really love this cowl pattern and I can't wait to uh, knit on it more and then uh, at some point finish it and wear it. I hope I've said everything about this. I'm doing a two-ply. I overspun <laughs> some of the parts. You can actually see this looks more of like a, a fingering weight in some places and then more of like a sport to decay in other places. I'm trying to track as much as I can um, on my hand spinning like Ravelry page as well as in my uh, in my making notebook but obviously I don't know all of the terms yet and all of the techniques so I can just like take note of what I know of kind of like yeah but I'm I'm doing that as much as I know I I kind of put down notes for okay so my last project of my nine whips um can you tell I had crazy cast on energy <laughs> Is actually one thing that I really wanted uh, I set out to do this um, this season and it's a balaclava and this actually came about in a in a really fun way since I wanted to do either the I think my favorite things knitwear has like two cows uh, no one balaclava and petite knit has one balaclava that I 
both of them I had like on my mind, one of them I had in my queue. And then my friend Lydia, Lydia Rababa, she actually came out with a test call for this balaclava and I was able to try on hers, which is something that you don't get to do every day, like try on a thing before you apply for the test net. And that was really helpful. And I just realized that I really like the look of the hood um, and like the, that it's, yeah, that is kind of like a hood. You can pull it like off. It has quite a long, it's not finished yet. So it's, it's gonna be a finished object like at the end of today, probably. And this would be something that you can knit in a week or even in a weekend if you have like lots of knitting time. Um, it's knit in Snefnook by Camarose. Um, I got it from our shop. Like I, I bought it at Strickverliebt. It's a two skein project. You can see I have just some, some uh, yarn left to finish off the kind of like cowl area, which I think is a nice aspect of this is that it's also going to kind of like keep your neck warm if you're like taking down the hood I can I will show you in the next episode this is just too floppy and like warm and cozy I like that it's um it's a really basic pattern it's a short pattern as well but I think it is well done uh, well constructed it's not overly complicated like there's nothing in the pattern where you'd be like why do I have to do this like that this doesn't make any sense and like every step is like oh yeah that makes sense Oh yeah, that makes sense. And uh, I think it's a, it's a nice, basic, cozy, like hood project. And I, I like that. If she's gonna come out or when she's gonna come out with this, I'm obviously gonna let you know. And it's gonna be in German and, and English, I think. And it's a nice like stash busting project. And because it's a blown yarn project, it's like really soft, but also it doesn't weigh like anything, basically. It's like a hundred gram balaclava. Um, and anything else I wanted to say about this? I'm not sure. It's a quite quick thing to do. Yeah, I'll show you when it's like completely finished and when I can actually put it on. And this has completely like scratched my, I want to do a balaclava itch. So I'm very happy about that. Getting stuff done. Okay, so these are my whips. Now I want to really kind of reflect on my autumn making plans and how I've carried them into winter and then share some of my Q1 plans with you. Uh, I have two acquisitions that I would like to share in the end of this video and then two podcasts that I couldn't mention all of them in my last video, but there's so many more that I really enjoy watching. So I wanted to share them. So let me put up my autumn and winter, I call them knitting plans. Um, some of them I started last year. So first thing would be the Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose. I started that. It's going to be a long-term project. I'm not going to stress myself out. I've seen people knit like, like 25 <laughs> kind of like um, squares in weeks. And that is just not something that I would see myself doing because I want to knit on other stuff as well and I don't want to be a monogamous blanket knitter and I could only see myself finish that many squares if I was to exclusively uh, knit on that which still one of the um, squares takes me like three to like two to three hours I'm not sure if I'm just like very slow with them or if that's something that you've also experienced knitting that but yeah I have casted it on. I'm actually actively working on it, on it most weeks and I enjoy the product and the process quite a bit. The pedal drop socks. I'm knitting the second one now, so I am I am keeping up with my plans, I think. The Harlow V-neck, uh, which is the the third um picture on the top right corner, I have finished. It was my last finished object in 2023. And I adore it. I have been wearing it so much. And so, yeah, I finished that. The next one is the Grow Sock, uh, Grow Socks by Fiber Tails. I have finished one of those. Uh, it is living at the shop as like a sample for one of our Life in the Long Grass. Um, I think it's like a plastic free uh, sock yarn that I knitted in. It's the Earth Sock, I think it's called. 
And so I am not planning on doing the second sock like immediately since the one sock is still just gonna live at the shop. Sometime if like we're not carrying that, um, maybe that yarn anymore or if my boss is going to be like, do you want to take your sock home? <laughs> um, I might make the second one because I like really enjoy the look of that. Uh, but that's not a pressing issue. But I knit one sock and that has scratched my I want to have a grow sock itch or I want to knit the grow sock itch so far. <laughs> then the Traveler cardigan. No, it's the Traveler hoodie, which I'm making the crew neck version. I did that. Um, or I'm doing it. <laughs> I didn't do it, like I didn't finish it, but I'm knitting on that right now and I'm sure I'll be finished by the end of winter. Then the next uh, pattern is the Clematis sweater. I'm not planning on doing anymore. My plans about that have just changed. Uh, I think there's a reason why I still haven't cast it on um, while having it in my like wish list and planning um, roundups a couple of times and I still haven't casted it on. I think I'm gonna repurpose or like use the yarn that I bought for it for something else. It is the Pearl Soho Linen Quill. I have a shawl pattern on my wish list that is using that, which is by um, BZB Knits, uh, Bridget Zhu, I think is her name. Um, she kindly gifted me that pattern. It was in my wish list and she gifted it to me. She's the designer of the pattern. That was so great of her. She actually was the one who taught me hand spinning at Fluff Fiber Festival. So hi, Bridget. <laughs> and we're still talking on DMs sometimes, which is so nice. Um, so I might use it for that one or I can just do another sweater with it because I, I would really like to knit with the yarn, but I'm not planning on doing that sweater anymore. And that's okay. Plans change. The next thing is the honey, is it the honey pouch, clutch, honey clutch, something like that. I have not started that. I have everything set up for it. I have the lining for it. I have the zipper for it. I have the yarn for it. It's a scrappy project. But I have just not felt the urge to like cast it on. I will at some point, but why do I always make myself like a cup of coffee and then forget about it and it gets cold? Like, mm. That's a really nice cup of tea, actually, not a coffee. Oh. <laughs> okay, next thing is the Traveler cardigan. Now it's the cardigan. <laughs> and that's by Ozetta. I didn't say who those patterns were by, but you all probably know. And I'll link it, and it's in my Ravelry project pages, and I'm <sighs> babbling on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I made that. I actually made it in an unspun yarn and I have finished it in December of last year and I really like it. And then lastly, the Mudo sweater and I'm currently knitting on that as you were able to see. So yeah, I think th those were quite successful autumn winter knitting plans uh, since I only, um, since like from nine patterns, I didn't make two. <laughs> I'm planning on making one of those sometime in the future and I ditched one of the project plans and I'm not gonna make that anymore. And I have started one, two, three, four, five, five projects and I have finished two of them. So I think that's quite nice. It's quite nice planning. <laughs> so I'm going to show, I'm going to, to round up this episode, I'm going to share a bit about my Q1 knitting like plans. I am going to structure the year like this since I already know some like summer projects I want to make and I'm going to kind of film another make nine video soon so I'm going to share more about my general knitting like wish list and plans of the year but like with project planning actually I'm going to do it quarterly. I have some like monthly goals for me, but I'm not gonna share them in, in detail since they're just for me to like keep myself accountable. Um, but yeah, I hope it makes sense. I have been thinking about these things so much and they've just been like marinating in my brain. And <laughs> This morning I was, was sending a, a voice note to Venetia like babbling on about all of these plans and being like but I I don't know like I have like a block in my head about like talking about them on Insta on YouTube 
since like filming my last re video really took it out of me like three and a half hours of filming and then some of the stuff went wrong with um, the camera settings and I had to like cut it into three parts because my software like my editing software wouldn't cooperate and so it was a, like an entire spiel <laughs> and I had to like pivot and be like okay but like you have all those notes and like you've made all these plans and people want to know like I want to know for the people that I really enjoy watching like if they made some quarterly knitting plans I'm like tell me <laughs> like I want to know so I have actually written them down in my maker's notebook which is by my friend Sophia from Seattle I'm gonna link her shop down below she kindly gave this to me at Flock and um, I really enjoy putting in my spinning notes although I should put more like notes about my second spin into this but I've been using it more so um, to write down goals and plans um, and so on. So I have two plans that are uh, kind of like start and finish uh, plan for this quarter. So I want to start and finish the Mudo and the Storm sweater. Both I have cast on. The Mudo I will probably be able to finish this month and then the Storm sweater I hope to be finishing within all the other months so I'm I'm counting this from like January to April so it's kind of like winter to spring plants some stuff I want to finish is the travel crew neck by Andrea Maori the Aosta cushion by the knit pearl girl the pedal drop socks and the Aviva socks which like I said both I just have to finish one more sock I would love to cast on a new sock with my uh, coast to coast yarn co because <laughs> that has been like I've been looking at it and being like, you're so beautiful and I want to knit with you, but I have been knitting on other stuff. So I would like to cast on one of those. And then do the, like finish the barber shawl, which check, that was my first thing I had finished this quarter and then finish my DRK Everyday Cow by Andrea Maori again. Some stuff I actually want to start this quarter, which I'm not sure if I'll be able to start all of them, but this would be my ideal world scenario would be the cumulus blouse i have a sweater quantity for that already but that is going to be another video idea that i would like to finish a uh, film not finish for you guys is to show off my sweater quantities in stash and what i have planned to knit with them like sweater and vest quantities maybe because all of these things that I want to start, I have the yarn for. Like I have in stash, it's not something that I have to buy anything for, which is um, a goal of mine too for the year. Then the Lana vest, this was hugely inspired by um, Amy from Knee Knits, Venetia from The Woolly Worker and Rachel from Wool Sea Knitting, I think is her handle. Her podcast on like how much she loves the Lana vest had had me like so excited for it so those three um as far as i know have made it recently and have all shared quite positive things about it so i would really like to make that it looks gorgeous and then the um, and like the cumulus blouse i want to do in like a mini cow with an instagram friend of mine um julia and then the dad sweater which is another <laughs> of my starting plans. I would love to make in a little mini cow with Venetia. Um, if any of you are interested on knitting those things alongside with us, please let me know in the comments. I might set up a, we could maybe set up like an Instagram chat for the cumulus blouse. Although like we don't have any concrete plans, probably going to cast on in like late March, early April. And I'm going to have to talk about uh, that to Julia as well. If she's like into having other people join, she asked me about that already, but I wasn't, I wasn't sure. But if you're interested, we could do that. And then the dad sweater, we could maybe do like, that is an impromptu idea of mine, but obviously Venetia has her discord channel, which is awesome. Like I would love to do something like that, but I honestly don't have the time at the moment. Like it feels, the idea feels so great. Like having this community, and I, I'm happy to be part of hers. Like, I mean, it's not just hers. It's all of the people that are in it. It's community in a way. Um, but we could maybe do like a channel, like a little mini cow 
in like on there sharing about the dad sweater and that is a pattern by Emily um, of Gently Chaotic Knits. And then lastly, I want to start the North Easterly Blanket. The North Easterly Blanket was kindly gifted to me by a, a viewer through my Ravelry wishlist, which is a great way to support my channel if you do uh, want to do that. It's linked in the description box down below. And um, so many of you have already used that tool. You can also support me on Ko-Fi if you want to, but um, the Ravelry wishlist viewers can uh, help me decide on what to make next. Although, as you can see, I don't have a shortage on plans or ideas or wishes, but um, I really wanted to make that. And I have plans to make it with my advent yarn, my mini advent skeins. Um, and like I said, I'm probably going to finish my cozy comfort blanket this year. Um, not sure about the um, sweet shop blanket if I'll take it into the new year. Like I don't want to make too many like long-term plans with that, but I would love to cast on a new blanket. So I always have like one, at least one or maybe two blankets to work on. Um, and I can see myself like knitting on that for years and years to come, like always put in my advents. I don't know, that would be kind of nice, I think. And then in general, like I had already mentioned before, I'm doing Whip Wednesdays and Scrappy Saturdays or Sundays. That just basically means that I'm trying to work on some old whips in a way, like mostly my socks I have worked on on Wednesdays. I usually do like 20 to 30 minutes of knitting or spinning before work in the mornings and then I try to use that time for my old whips. And then on the weekends, like Saturdays or Sundays, I'm trying to get work done on my scrappy projects. So these are mostly my blankets at the moment. That has been quite nice, like trying to structure my week, um, especially with my crazy cast on energy that has helped me kind of like hone it in and be like, okay, what do I work on today? Otherwise, I'm just like grabbing what I want to work on. Like I'm, I'm not trying to be too like strict about any of these things, but some kind of like guidelines within my making help me kind of like stay on track. Some more general wishes for this first quarter of 2024 would be to knit a cabled sweater. I have been wanting to knit a cable sweater for quite some time. Another one would be to sew a garment. Um, not much more to say about this actually. I have the fabric, I have the machine, I have made some project bags, I've tried and like done the basics. Now I'm just waiting actually on a Christmas present that hasn't arrived yet. I was uh, wishing for the uh, No Waste pattern book by Brigitte Halmerson, I think is her name, which was hugely inspired by Anna's, um, the Brook Willow Knits podcast recommendation of that book. And I would love to make my first garment this quarter. Yeah. And then to learn more about spinning. <laughs> I have had in my watch list all of uh, Fiber Love Diaries, kind of like spinning um, learning videos. And I have had them on there for such a long time because I felt like I wanted to watch podcasts and like yearly roundups of all the people more than like tutorials on sewing and spinning. But like yesterday, I think, I just went into that, okay, let's learn something new mood. And I watched so many tutorials, obviously, or like teaching videos in a way, like classes. I am going to link those because I found them to be so, so interesting. I actually have a spinning, sewing and knitting podcast, um, not podcast, playlist on my channel and they should be public so I am going to or I have I have been putting all of the videos that I find helpful like for example doing the cable cast on by Andrea Maori that is a tutorial that's in my knitting playlist um, learning how to ply on a um, spinning wheel by Fiber Love Diary that's in my spinning list doing like a little project bag sewing tutorial. That's my sewing playlist. So I hope you get the gist. And I um, hope that you check that out if you're ever like in the mood to learn something new or if you're looking for a great tutorial. 
So like I said, I'm going to share more about my Make 9 because I don't want this video to be too long in my next video. I hope you um, will return to watch that again. Let me show you my acquisitions real quick and then I'm gonna say goodbye. <laughs> um, I've shared this on my Instagram already. Uh, we had a pop-up shop by Frau Wölfchen um, at our local yarn shop, at the at our yarn shop. It's not just the local, it's the yarn shop I work at. And I got two braids. I got two comb top braids to make the, and I'm not sure if this is going to be enough, if I have to buy a third, if I'm going to have to supplement like a non-hand spun, maybe lace weight or fingering weight into it. I'm gonna do the math when I finish my cowl, um, but I wanna do the uh, traveler shawl, or now that she's come out like two days ago with a traveler cowl and Maori, I wanna make those. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I'm gonna start with the cowl since it's not as intimidating to do like smaller knit spins, like projects, as there's so much that could go wrong. Um, but yeah, let me show you the fiber. So firstly, I got a Cordell comb top in Immortel. Um, she said that that is a word, an old German word. So obviously it sounds like a model, like uh, someone that, like an undeath person, like someone that can't die. <laughs> Not sure how to explain this, but she said it's like an old German word for dried flowers which I think is such a nice way to explain or like to understand this colorway even better. And yeah, like I said, this is a Cordell. And then I also got a BFL comb top, which this is at the shop right now. And I hope when you're like watching this that we still have some of this left because I think this color, like this colorway is Awesome. This is called There May Be Giants, and I just love the colors in this. So yeah, as you can see, I picked two braids that I think complement each other really well. And um, yeah, Heike, who is the dyer behind Frau Wölfchen, she was uh, at the shop for the pop-up store, and she's really nice, and uh, we get along super well, so... If you want to check her out as well, I would highly recommend doing so. Like I said, my my most recent spinning project has been with her fiber as well, and that has been so enjoyable. So yeah, this is my spinning journey, and like I can't I can't believe that like I'm a spinner now. I think that's so cool. Like I enjoy spinning so much, and I enjoy my bliss by wool makers as well. I actually got it for Christmas like I had hoped I would. Um, my mom and my boyfriend got it for me and um, I very much appreciate it. So my next acquisition was uh, something that I really wanted to try for such a long time and it's the Hillesvog um, Solje. Um, it's the Hillesvog Solje. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I really wanted to try out try out Hillesburg for some time now. Uh, it's a Norwegian um, wool fabric. And I tried, or I got their colorway cognac. And I got four skeins of that. I think it's so, so beautiful. And I actually got this because I got another yarn. And let me show you that yarn. Sorry for the crinkly noise. I ordered from the Explore Knits and Fibers Leave No Trace collection. I'm gonna take it out just to show you the label. And I ordered a mini set. This is just the Denali Sock mini set. I'm not sure which colors they are and like from which collection they are, but I very much like them. And then I got four skeins of Surrey. Let me take it out of the thing and this is what it looks like and I'm chuffed with this and that's why I got this to hold it together. I think that this would be the perfect yarn to do a cable sweater in if I were to like knit a cable sweater in the near future. 
I would like to do it in this combination. I don't know if you remember my like mood boards from last year being like, I want to have like a dark orange cable sweater, but this is basically making that wish come true. Um, and yeah, I found a, a German shop that offers uh, the Solje, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, it's called Calling Sheep and they offer the Hillesbach. And then I ordered the Leave No Trace with um, an, like an internet friend of mine who's also from Germany. And this is the uh, first time, like the second time we talked about it and the first time we actually did it, ordering from a collection together and like split, splitting, shipping and customs, which worked out pretty good. So yeah, this is going to be a cable sweater in my future. I am going to talk about my sweater quantities some more whenever I get to that video, my kind of like sweater quantity stash and planning video or what I have planned for these. Oh yeah, and I wanted to share about this acquisition that is a gift from Sophia, again by Making Treasures. She was so kind and asked me if she could send me a little Christmas gift. And actually what was in the box was a Wilbury Fiber Co. sock set. Let me show you. It's called October. And so I will have to knit on this in October. It's actually living on my pegboard now. So yay. And then the thing that was like the main part of this gift was a sock box. And it has my name on it and I'm like what like that is so nice like how <laughs> this is currently hosting my um, single socks uh, which like I said I'm making some mates for and then still I have to eat this she she sent me some uh, chocolate with it and it was packaged so nicely, so I, I still have all the packaging in here. And then this was the label, so maybe she's coming out with this. That would, that would be really cool. I'm gonna have to check it out. It's made with aromatic cedar, which I think is gonna help like prevent, prevent uh, moths getting in there. Not that I had any problems with that, so knock on wood. But yeah, it's a sock box or really just anything. <laughs> And I was so, so happy to receive this. She actually also sent a little note, which I put on my on my um, other like pegboard thing. Um, and she's just the sweetest. Like she's a fan of this podcast and I'm a fan of her brand, which I think is, yeah, it's nice. We're fangirling uh, about each other's work all the time. And that's just so nice. So thank you, Sophia. And say hi to Elliot from me. <laughs> who I know sometimes watches the videos with you and then just goes like hi to me which I think is the cutest so let me have a look into my notes the one last thing I wanted to mention is that I wanted to highlight podcasters or podcasts that I enjoy watching throughout these next couple of videos at the beginning of this new year since I wasn't able to put all of them in my roundup today I wanted to recommend Leslie, Knit California to you. I've mentioned her before in this episode. I really much enjoy her like data-based approach, very structured approach, um, very stash-loving approach. Um, and yeah, I just enjoy her videos. So I wanted to highlight her and then I wanted to highlight the Crea Bea, who's Rebecca. Um, I don't know why, but she has the energy of a person that you just want to be friends with. Like, she's very talented, I think. Her patterns are gorgeous. I have actually applied for her newest test knit, and I'm not sure if I will get in, because apparently a lot of people have applied. But yeah, I'm very much in love with her Lauder um, sweater. Yeah, I just love her approach to doing vlog casts. Yeah, doing the podcast. She, th I think she's just really laid back for like how talented she is. And I think she has a great approach on, on stuff. And I don't know, I just enjoy her videos. Like I could watch them on repeat. 
I could see myself like grabbing a coffee with her and just like Ning in Edinburgh. Like that would be a scenario I would enjoy. At least I would enjoy. I'm not sure about her. <laughs> but yeah, so these were the two podcasts that I wanted to uh, quickly mention at the end of this video. I'm going to mention two more next video and help your yeah, just enjoying all the incredible knitting podcast content that is out there. Like, I'm so blessed to be part of this community. And um, yeah, I'm going to drink my cold tea now. <laughs> and I hope you're, you're knitting. Feel free to share in the comments what you're currently knitting on. I would like to know. Like I said, if you want to support the channel you can click on the links in the description box you can go to my ko-fi or to my ravelry wishlist i am so grateful to everyone who has done so far and to my monthly ko-fi supporters thank you so much like that is so kind of you to um kind of val value my content like the things i put out so so much that you're actually willing to like pay for it like for the cost of a coffee each month um also to everyone everyone else who is just watching liking commenting and sharing this video thanks y'all thanks for making this uh an option for me to kind of do it as like a part-time gig next to my um my yarn shop work and yeah i hope you enjoyed this video if you did feel free to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already I will see you in my next video and I hope you're all having a great time until then. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and I hope you're getting loads of knitting done. Bye!